Every exhibition has a story and want to tell a story. When the uh, Lithuanian government decided that the year 2020 will be a year of commemoration of the Vilna Gaon and the Lithuanian Jewish history, we in the National Library of Lithuania decided to try and tell a story of the Vilna Gaon, the main hero of that year. And we thought it would be quite easy to do, because the National Library of Lithuania has the greatest collection of the Gaon's work in the whole country. And it was uh, admitted as a national treasure and uh, integrated in the UNESCO program, the memory of the world. In the end, people who come to see an exhibition would not read the books. It's not a place and not a time. So how to tell a story of a person who was so elusive that even in his lifetime was very little known to his own community. And we, after several centuries after that, know still less. So we decided through this uh, exhibition to tell indeed what we know, what is known about the Vilna Gaon, how was it remembered, and how was it even imagined in his native city, Vilnius, in Lithuania, and abroad. In this, we not only used our own collections, the National Library Judaica collection, but also had a very important help of several memory institutions of Lithuania and abroad, among them Lithuanian State Central Archives, Lithuanian State Historical Archives, the uh, National Museum of Cherlonis, uh, Vilna Gaon Jewish History Museum, and our main partner abroad, the YIVO Institute of Jewish Research in New York. On this exhibition, we uh, took as a motto the Gaon's own words. It is better to, to be among the wise rather than the influential. And so at the exhibition, we don't have and would not find even uh, any documents that would testify about his high rank in the Jewish community or his position as a head of any educational institution. Of course, he could do all that, and the Jewish community of his time appealed to him many times to do just that. But he never agreed, because all his interest was to dedicate all his life, literally every second of it, to the Torah study. And so uh, there is a document in Lithuanian historical archives that it is the first mentioning of the Vilna Gaon, and he is mentioned, he and his family are mentioned as just ordinary citizen of the Vilnius old city. And in this document, in this uh, uh, register of 1965, his name should be found because it doesn't written in any other way than the names of other people. Just an ordinary Elias Zelmanovich. So, how come that he became so famous if in his lifetime he was so almost invisible? Of course, the main source of uh, the high reputation of Vilna Gaon uh, came through his works. But it is also a very uh, characteristic of him that when he lived, he didn't care to publish even one of his texts. All of them began to be published only after his death. And the first of them, which was published in Lvov in 1799, that means two years after the Gaon's death, gave the name to this exhibition because the work was called Shnot Eliyahu, the years of Elijah. Of course, the name was given not by Gaon himself, uh, but it was the first commemoration of him in the name of his published work. And from that time, on, it was a commentary to Mishnah, to the Jewish legal code. And from that time on, 
through the whole 19th century and the 20th century in Lithuania and abroad there appeared a lot of his publications and all of them were prepared by his disciples among them were also his sons and very careful editors the works of Vilna Gaon are being published till that day although not in Lithuania here we see the unprecedented variety of genres of religious literature, rabbinistic literature, in which the disciples and editors found and published the manuscripts of Vilna Gaon. It is very unusual in Jewish religious culture to be a specialist in so many fields, and the Vilna Gaon was not only a very profound scholar, but also a great erudite. It is highly symbolic that the last Vilna Gaon's work published in Lithuania, and uh, it was in Kedaini in 1940, is at the same time one of the last Hebrew printings, uh, printed books in Lithuania at all. In summer 1940, the Soviets annexed Lithuania and immediately uh, began their politics of oppression of Jewish religious culture and of Hebrew culture. This published Vilna Gaon, Gaon's work is one of the last testimonies of the beautiful period of the Jewish culture in Lithuania. We would be amiss not to show one of the great works of uh, the Vilna Gaon for which he was maybe the most famous in the whole world of Jewish religious literacy. It is his work with the old and sometimes incorrect versions of the Babylonian and Jerusalem Talmuds. He made numerous corrections to the erroneously written pages of the Talmuds and also wrote such important glosses to it that shortly after his death, all the editions of the Talmuds were published only with his commentary. Although Vilna Gaon never taught in any yeshiva and didn't establish any yeshiva, still he had a very small, I would say, elite circle of his very devoted disciples. This group of disciples were, were responsible for the publishing and preparing to publication and publishing his work and in that way presenting his legacy to the world. But they thought of something else. They decided that not only they personally should benefit from the Gaon's method of study. And this method could be presented in very brief words. It is actually to be so deep in the texts that you don't have really any time for the external world. So all your time should be given to the texts and to their very deep analysis. In that way, they wanted to, and they did establish a series of new type yeshivas that later were called Lithuanian yeshivas. Not only because, maybe mainly not because of their geographical location, because some of them were in nowadays Belarusia. Among them, the first of them, the famous Volozhin yeshiva, that was established in 1802 by the most devoted disciple of the Vilna Gaon, Chaim ben Itzhak. But also throughout the 19th century and the 20th century, uh, such yeshivas were established in geographical Lithuania as well. We see here in that exhibition the world of Lithuanian Jewish yeshivas, maybe a small part of that world, and we wanted to show that because in all of them Vilna Gaon's name was a sacred legacy. From the middle 19th century, the image of Vilna Gaon forms an integral part of Vilnius and Lithuanian Jewish consciousness, and it also becomes ubiquitous. It enters even the popular culture, literature, poetry, and images of Vilna Gaon comes to be very, very popular and very accessible. The famous Hebrew poet Zalman Schneur in his poem Vilna wrote that 
the image of Vilna Gaon benevolently looks to upon you from the wall of every Jewish house. We have a literal testimony to that, a popular poster, you can call it the epitome of popular culture, that uh, depicts the interior of typical Jewish home and we indeed see that there are portraits and one of them in a very special place is a portrait of Vilna Gaon. Of course, the, one of the most important uh, sites and places of the memory of the Vilna Gaon was his grave at the Old Jewish Cemetery uh, at Schnibischkes. The place, the cemetery itself, sadly doesn't exist now and the remains of the Vilna Gaon are transferred, has been transferred to the Vilnius Jewish Cemetery which is active till our days. And there was small mausoleum, we should say, ohel in Hebrew, of Vilna Gaon. It was actually a very known place, not only for the Jews. Many of the interwar Polish and other photographers and artists depicted this place. But towards the 1939, the ohel became, I would say, decrepit, and it was a competition, a tender in that year, 1939, to renew and build a new, actually, a new mausoleum of, Vilna, of the Vilna Gaon. In the National Library of Lithuania, there are some preparatory works that the architects presented to that tender. Although, sadly, it couldn't come to fruition because of the beginning of the Second World War. But still, the works of those uh, participants shows how important the image of Vilna Gaon and how uh, his, and his commemoration was to them. And they depicted uh, some of them in a very traditional way and some in a very modern, modernistic even way. It's a pity none of those works were implemented. There was another place in Vilnius which was very important for the commemoration of Vilna Gaon. It was so-called Gaon's Klois, or the synagogue of Vilna Gaon. It doesn't mean that he was, that he even once entered the synagogue. It was erected after his death, in his memory. Of course, this synagogue, as any other Jewish institution, had its minute books, and one of them survived till this day. It is an exhibit that you see now. How did it happen? In 1940, when Soviets came to Vilnius and began their repressive politics against Judaism and the institutions of Jewish religion, a person saved the Pinkas, the minute book of the Gaon's synagogue, and donated it to the collections, to the archives of the Yivo Institute that acted then in Vilnius. Of course, with the Nazi occupation, the YIVO Institute and all the other uh, Jewish institutions that remained were destroyed and some of their collections didn't survive. But these pinkas survived rather mir miraculously. The famous Yiddish poet Avram Sutskever, before he left the Vilnius ghetto to join the partisans, he found and ha hidden the pinkas in at the territory of the Vilna Ghetto. After liberation of Vilnius, he came back and he found the document. Although after several years, a full disillusion in the politics of the Soviets toward the Jewish culture uh, forced him to leave Vilnius. Again, miraculously, he could take the document with him and closing the circle, he gave the Pinkas back to the Yivo Institute that continued his uh, activities in New York, and it works there till this day. From their collection, from their nowadays collection, the Pinkas came uh, again back to Vilnius to be shown at that exhibition. And it is a striking example of how the name of the Vilna Gaon was sacred even in these extreme circumstances of everyday danger and death.